Duke Nukem 3D is a first-person shooter video game released in 1996 by 3D Realms. The game quickly gained popularity for its innovative gameplay, irreverent humor, and memorable protagonist. But one aspect of the game that often goes overlooked is its graphics. Let's take a look and analyze the process of creating some textures and sprites. Hmm, where should I begin? Shotgun. The shotgun is a versatile weapon that can be effective at both close and medium ranges, against almost every enemy in the game. The first interesting fact is that this is the only weapon based on the real one. And the mighty food. Here is a picture George Broussard posted on his Twitter. The pistol grip shotgun from Duke Nukem 3D, bought at a gun show in 1995, used in a Texas Dab of Corrections. And the shotgun was captured for the pickup sprite and rotoscoped for the first-person animation. But what kind of weapon on this screenshot? It turns out that a different shotgun was used in the beta version. If we look closely at the beta animation frames, we notice not only the absence of the pistol grip, but also a different stock and ejection port. Here is the final version of the rotoscope. Originally, the shotgun looked like this. Kind of raw? It is. Afterwards, it was hand-painted by the artist to the final version that we all know. Let's admire this beautiful landscape of Los Angeles. You probably think it was hand-painted, using different photos for reference. You are almost right. The game's most famous skybox is based on a scan from a magazine. The artist changed the location of some of the buildings, added clouds, mountains and the Hollywood sign. Not many people know, but in the beta version, Skybox was completely different. The sky was red and the city was destroyed. Ah, the peaceful moonscape. Wait, I think I recognize these rocks. Indeed, they are the stones from the moon Skybox. The game's title screen also holds some secrets. There are hidden messages only shown by modifying the base palette indexes 96 and 160. Scott Miller initially suggested that GIZ and LSO could be the aliases of the two members of the 3D Realms or Apogee Graphic Design Department at the time, but wasn't 100% sure. Joe Ziegler reached out to Alan H. Blum 3, who said, Haha, I can't totally remember, but I think that's true. GIZ is James' story, don't remember what his LSO means. I'm pretty sure James fixed that image so it looked good in our palette, and he put that hidden in there while we were walking super late one night, like usual. Joe explained that during development. Story used to sleep under his desk at the office sometimes. It looks like the guys were crunching before the term was invented. Duke Nukem 3D has a lot of unused sprites. For example, these pipes from Rise of the Triad or these frames from the Enforcer animation. It looks like he is eating something. Yep, we can confirm it thanks to the sprite from the beta version. This also explains why the poop sprite is in the same sprite sheet. You most likely saw this poster with the girl in the game. Well, judging by the screenshots from the beta version, originally it was a little bit different. It has different text. Debbie Does Duke Debbie Does Dallas is a 1978 pornographic film starring Bambi Woods. And here is the poster of this movie. The developers used different photo references, starting from album covers and ending with random photos. What a beautiful couple and cat. Ok, screw that guy. We'll have to take that cat out, too. Let's put her back in this woman's hands. ta -da! And there is a reference for the game's sprite. The Bayland in episode 4 is based on a real amusement park. Babes of the Caribbean is actually Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a dark ride at Disneyland. The developers used scenery for sprites of people, dogs and signs. Check this place in episode 2, level 5.
and this scene is from the end screen of the second episode. Hmm, Autodesk Texture Catalog from 1984. Wait a minute. I know these road signs. They are even in the same order in game files as in this catalog. The last fact for today is a little story about the free thrower. The free thrower is a weapon in Duke Nukem 3D that fires a stream of freeze liquid that can freeze enemies in place. It is effective against many types of enemies in the game, as it can temporarily immobilize them, making them easy to take out with other weapons. Overall, the free thrower is a unique and fun weapon in Duke Nukem 3D that adds an interesting twist to gameplay. But was it always like that? Let's take a look at the concept art first. Laser chainsaw? Yeah, originally it was a laser chainsaw. We can even check better materials and see how it looked like. Later, this weapon became a flamethrower. We even got a crappy version of it in the world too. But eventually this weapon evolved into the free thrower. A big thank you to the community of Duke 4 and Voidpoint.